Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a great one for you today. We're learning how to play aerials by System of a Down. Uh, the only bummer about this is it is in a crazy tuning um, that I will, fair warning, this guitar does not like. And I'm kind of probably going to be battling the tuning the entire time. I'll be slightly out of tune here and there. Not a lot I can do about it. It just can retune a hundred times during the video shoot, but uh, it's going to go out every once in a while. Um, but anyway, so just bear with me. So the tuning is drop C tuning. If you don't know what that is, that means you tune your entire guitar down one whole step. And then you put your guitar in a drop tuning, which takes means taking your low E the low string and tuning it down another whole step. Um, so it's basically like drop D tuning, but everything down a whole step from there. So what are those notes? That is the low string is now a C. And then the A string is a G. The D string is a C. G string is an F. B string is an A. And the high E string is a D. So everything's tuned down. So obviously if you're doing that on a, see this is a floating trim system. So this is an absolute nightmare for me. But <laughs> anyway, we're gonna do it because it's an awesome song and we've gotta get it going, right? Before I get into it, please, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so you know when I see a new video. Um, and if you wanna support what I do here on YouTube with all these free song lessons, uh, which some people ask, what's the best way to support uh, the lessons? The best way is just to join my Guitar Academy. Uh, to, it's, you'll see a link to it in the description below. That'll give you a free seven-day trial for new members. Um, and that, um, my Guitar Academy contains all my guitar courses from complete beginner stuff to advanced, more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, you name it. You get personalized support from me. Um, so it's a, it's a great community uh, I've got going over there. So please come join us by just clicking that link below and starting your free trial. All right, so let's jump into this song. So we are in drop C. A little bit of a bummer, I know, but um, you know, you gotta suffer for your art, right? Now, let's get to this. This is a great um, picking exercise. So, if you guys if you need some help with that, it's, it's gonna be pretty challenging for you because it goes pretty quick. So, let's, let's get the nose down first. So, we're basically moving the note. Kind of around on the the low string. It's a low C string now, but you know I'm not smart enough to keep calling it that. It's probably it's gonna be a low E for this lesson. So we're gonna uh, basically start here. Let's what's the picking pattern for the most part? It's gonna be picking the uh, low E string, then the A, that open A, and the open D. Keep in mind I know those strings aren't that tuned to that anymore, but that's how most people know them. So let's call them that. So. Um, now, uh, watching him play it, this was like he's doing them all downstrokes. Uh, when I play this kind of thing, um, this arpeggiated picking where you're picking across chords, I like to always pick in the direction of the next string that I'm going to be playing. So I'm not, he might be doing that as well. Uh, so in order to do that, that means I'm playing a downstroke and then another downstroke on the A string. But when I get to the D string, I'm going to play an upstroke. Why? Because that takes me back in the direction of the next string I need to hit. So it's more economical. So you're always picking in the direction of the next string you're going to be playing. So that would be a down, down, up. So it's kind of this pattern for most of it. While you're moving around the note. So we basically have, um, there's a couple extra hits in there. So basically we have this three, you pick across the strings, then down to two on the low E string, the same picking pattern, and then down the open string. And so then he goes, cross that with the open string in the bass three times, and then he hits the, the low E string, I know it's not an E string, uh, once, so by itself. So it's gonna be like an extra downstroke in there. So we have this. And then we're gonna start the pattern. He kind of slides into the fifth fret. So 
it's really the same pattern, but fifth fret, pick across those three strings, three, and then when you get to two is when you do the repeated, the, do the pattern three times on. And then coming back and hitting that extra note there, which is that now this time, instead of the open string, it's gonna be the second fret there. So, so, so far we have this. And then we're going to start working our way back up. So it's straight across first. We have uh, that third fret, the sails picking across three strings, that down, down, up, then five, then seven, and then eight. So that's just the normal picking pattern with those different bass notes. And then what we're gonna do is go back to seven, and here he mixes it up a little bit. We're gonna have the, we're gonna go from this seventh fret there on the low E string, skip over to the D, open D, and then we go down to the fifth fret, and then hit the open A after it. So that little four note, he has to do it as like a little transition thing. So that's probably the toughest, toughest part, because it doesn't, it kind of breaks the pattern. And then we're back to the normal pattern. Remember, I hit that last hit there. So, all together. hit on that note and then from there that little last hit there gives us an opportunity to jump up here uh, this is just in the intro that he plays this part we have this so that's that's up here at the 12th fret here same picking pattern though down down up so it, 12th fret on the low E to 10, and then down to 7. So this. Remember, sure that we always get that extra hit on the low string there. The kind of little transition note is going to be whatever note we're kind of hanging out on. Pick it across three times. We're going to come pick that again. So. And then, same thing, but we're gonna shift up to the 14, then 10, and seven. So instead of 12, 10, seven, it goes 14, 10, seven. So it's kind of the same thing done twice, except starting from 12 the first time, starting from 14 the second time. And then, and then we have this ending, which has this. So it sounds like here, when he starts down here at the 12th fret, back up to the 12th, and he starts doing the pattern up to 14, and then start, when he starts getting 15, so we have this. Doesn't, he doesn't really continue the pattern. He's just kind of doing the bass line at the very end. Um, so after you get to this 12, 14, and then 15, and then you just kind of hear 17, 15, 14. So without that little picking added to it. And then when he gets back down to 12, you start hearing the AA string again. Then down to the 
10 with so that open A in there, and then back to the E. And here it sounds like what he's doing is he's playing the he's playing the 12th fret there on the low E string, but his the rest of his finger is kind of getting the harmonics of the like the A and the D. You can just play like that if you want. Or, play them all harmonics. So, but remember here, it's just that he, he doesn't continue the pattern completely when he gets up here. So you can just hold it 12 if you want there. And that's the whole intro there. So now we're going to jump into the heavy riff so things get a lot easier after he, uh, from here. So we have this. So you kind of play that like four times. So that's uh, just this power chord here. You can just play off the eighth fret of the low E string across the low E, A, and the D. And then we have kind of the open A, uh, open, open uh, kind of the low bottom two strings. Just kind of chug on those a couple few times. Three, four, and then come up and grab these octaves. So we're gonna play this 10th fret here on the A, and then the 12th fret on the G together. Now you gotta make sure you're muting all the strings around it and in between them. So you're muting that note on the D string with your, uh, pretty much the muting's taken care of of all the other strings but with your index finger. So I'm, when I'm playing that 10th fret there on the A, it's muting the bottom of the E string with the tip of my index. And it's muting the D string and it's muting the B and the high E too. So I can just hit all six strings. And you're hearing those just those two notes I want to heard. So so we have this. And then we're back to this the chugs again, then down to the eighth fret octave on the off the A string. Then now seventh fret and fifth. So let's just take it. There's octaves from ten, eight, seven, five, with the same in between each one. B. All right, so after you've done that like four times, it goes back to the, uh, to the. All right, so we just kind of go back and do that clean part without those little that little ending that we did in the intro. Just do that section twice. That was like basically the first half of the intro. Um, just do that twice, and then we're back to the same uh, heavy riff with the the uh, power chord and the same octaves. All right, so that's really uh, kind of the same as the first time we did that, except the very ending of the riff, um, we go, instead of going, kind of hold that, and then take it down a half fret. All right, so I just basically take that down to the seventh fret power chord there. Start on that a little bit. And then he starts adding these little, which I think are overdubs in the recording. I don't know if they're actually doing them live because there's one here. There's another one. 
this little half set thing, but you can add it to this lower chord. Kind of chug on this power chord first, and then add now the ninth fret on the D. I'm mean, sorry, ninth fret on the G string, I'm sorry. And then play, play it again, but now with a 10th fret on the G, and then back in between that nine and 10 each time. So it kind of builds up to that. And then it, uh, from there, it kicks into the, the really heavy power chord riff, looks like this. So that's just those power chords, this one finger power chords. Starting at the third fret across the E, A, and D. Then down to two. So the same three strings, you should cross three strings each time. Two, zero. So three, two, zero. And then from there we have five, three, two. Five. this. Alright, now from there, we're going to go back to three. And I go three, five, seven, eight, seven, five, and then three, two, zero. So it's kind of like we... Like the same notes that we were doing with the little picking pattern, the clean part, is what we're, we're kind of tracing with power chords. So it's pretty much the exact same thing, so. So if you know the clean part, it's gonna be easy to just play a power chord version of it. All right, and so you do that riff three times and then it just goes back to the clean riff. So like kind of the end of the song. Just repeat that, sec that part of it. So after you've repeated it for a while, just that that half of that that clean riff, um, is in it on the open string. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a uh, kind of uh, not a lot of sections to the song, but uh, uh, especially that picking part there can be pretty challenging to get it to, to to speed. But it's a it's a great little arpeggiated picking workout um, to get uh, to get it as fast as he plays it on the original recording. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.